lovely to see you how are you doing i'm doing good i'm doing really really well and i hope all you people out there are as well and it's lovely to be part of all this again oh yeah. yes see you can never get away from doing something for church <laughs> no no can't get away from you mostly barbara <laughs> no it's really good to have you with us Thank and you. Yeah, and everyone else for joining us this morning um, on Tuesday, the 18th. We're, p we're past halfway through August already. Gosh. I know, I know. So, but yes, we're here to worship the Lord and um, Mr. Hall is going to help me this morning. So we'll just steady our hearts <laughs> as we begin. And we say, O oh Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. 
Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion, who satisfies you with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all, all you who works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us, so let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. 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 And we've just got one psalm today, Psalm 73, so we're going to read it antiphonally. Mr. Hall, is that okay? <laughs> yes, whatever that means, yes. <laughs> we take, take it in turn. turns. <laughs> Yeah, Psalm 73. In the Lord God have I made my refuge. Truly God is loving to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. Nevertheless, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious of the proud. I saw the wicked in such prosperity. But they suffer no pains, and their bodies are sleek and sound. They come to no misfortune like other folk, nor are they plagued as others are. Therefore, pride is their necklace, but them like a cloak. Their iniquity comes from within, their con the conceit of their heart overflow. They scoff and speak only of evil, they talk of oppression from on high. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue ranges round the earth. And so the people turn to them, and find in them no fault. They say, how should God know? Is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the wicked. Ever at ease they increase their wealth. Is it in vain that I cleanse my heart and washed my hands in innocence? All day long have I been stricken and chastened every morning. If I had said, I will speak as they do, I should have betrayed the generation of your children. Then thought I to understand this, but it's too hard for me. Until I entered the sanctuary of God and understood the end of the wicked. How you set them in slippery places. You cast them down to destruction. How suddenly do they come to destruction, perish and come to a fearful end. As with a dream when one awakes, so, Lord, when you arise, you will despise their image. When my heart became embittered and I was pierced to the quick. I was but foolish and ignorant. I was like a brute beast in your presence. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing upon earth that I desire in comparison with you. Though my flesh and my heart fail me, God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Truly those who forsake you will perish. You will put to silence the faithful who betray you. But it is good for me to draw near to God. 
In the Lord God, I have made my refuge, that I may tell of all your works. In the Lord God, have I made my refuge. Holy God, may we find wisdom in your presence and set our hope not on uncertain riches, but on the love that holds us to the end. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. And we're going to skip to the canticle, a song of peace. I'm just skipping. Well, if Spirit of God, teach us your ways that we may walk in the paths of peace. Come, let us go up to the mountain of God, to the house of the God of Jacob, that God may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For the law shall go out from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. God shall judge between the nations and shall mediate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O people of God, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. Spirit of God, teach us your ways that we may walk in the paths of peace. And our scripture reading is from Acts chapter 4, verses 1 to 12. While Peter and John were speaking to the people, the priests, the captains of the temple, and the Sadducees came to them much annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming that in Jesus there is, a, there is the resurrection of the dead. So they arrested them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who heard the word believed, and they numbered about 5,000. The next day, their rulers, elders and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John and Alexander, on all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what, by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick, and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation in one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your word and we pray that you speak to us anew today. Come to us afresh. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, who do we fix our hope upon? That is the question we're going to explore today. So a bit of context for our scripture reading. Peter and John, they've been going to the temple to pray in the afternoon and a man who had been lame since birth was outside the temple gate, which we're told is called beautiful, begging as he had done every day. Now if we skip ahead in the text, Acts 4.22, it tells us this man was over 40 years old and he had been lame since birth. So he'd had to beg for many years. And he was having to rely on the help of others to help him. To get him to the gate every day. To feel generous enough to give him money to live. Imagine living that life. And when he asked the disciples for money, Peter looked straight at him. 
and he told him to look at him and said, I can't give you silver or gold, but what I do have, I give you. So Peter's trying to say, I can't give you what you want, but I sure can give you what you need. And the man was miraculously healed by the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. The man wanted to be given money to be able to eat, but Peter said, I've got something better for you. And he gave him back his legs so he could earn money. He gave him back what he needed in his life. And the first thing the man did was to walk and jump into the temple praising God. He knew it was by the grace of God he had been healed. So he made sure it was God who he thanked. Before all he could do was sit outside the temple helpless without hope. And the disciples had been given the authority to heal in the power of the Holy Spirit, not by their own power. And the goal was always to bring faith. And now this man had just that. He had something to fix his hope upon. You see, the man was helpless without God. And I too want to be in a place where God is indispensable to me. I want to live a life that is in line with my prayers. That God would put me in a state where he has to help me. Or I will become immobile, helpless and ineffective like the lame man. Because I want to see God working in my life. To know that everything comes from him. To see him show up in miraculous ways. And that's a dangerous prayer to pray. But I don't want my attitude towards God to be one where I think I can get along without him. Because I know that that way I really won't be living. Now the Jews, they knew they were descendants of Abraham. They were physically descended from him. But they weren't spiritually. They did not share Abraham's traits of humility, obedience, faith and love. And this is what we need to have in order to share it with others. So remember when Jesus warned his disciples, if they persecute me, they will persecute you. Well, our scripture today shows a continuation and an extension of the persecution Jesus suffered. And it would be wrong to say that the Christian life is an easy one. That we too won't experience difficulties and struggles Never more than our Lord had to bear, but some will experience tougher situations than others. But know where our hope ultimately lies. The Jewish leaders were really annoyed because the disciples were proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. Now the Sadducees didn't believe in the resurrection of the dead. But these were the leaders of the people they were meant to be teaching and guiding under their authority. And yet here they were trying to stifle the disciples because they feared they would undermine their own power and authority. Yet we see all this was in vain. We know that by the healing of just one man, 5,000 were brought to faith despite such fierce opposition by their leaders. Now, do you remember being in school, in a lesson where you had to be really quiet, and then you'd have this one friend that would make you laugh, and it probably wasn't even funny, but no matter how you tried to stifle that laugh, it just got more intense. And the more you tried to hold it in, the more you couldn't. And so you'd struggle to breathe and your body would start shaking until you couldn't contain it any longer. That reminds me of the faith being shared by the disciples. The Jewish leaders tried to quash it, to silence it, to stop it in its tracks, but they couldn't. People were believing in their thousands and it couldn't be stopped. So we're given a list of the people who were there at the meeting of the Jewish council as they questioned Peter and John. And basically we can recognise that these were people who had been against Jesus when he was condemned. 
and they ask, by what power or in what name have you done this? Under whose authority are you doing this? Can you see how much Peter has changed? When he was asked at Jesus' arrest if he knew him, he denied knowing him vehemently three times. Now we see him filled with the Holy Spirit and is not holding back. He's given himself over to the work of the Spirit and as a result he has this new confidence, this new determination to bear witness to Christ and he makes it clear this is this is how this man was healed of over 40 years lame through Jesus Christ of Nazareth the very one you had crucified and who God raised from the dead and then we get a bit more evidence of this that Jesus is the fulfillment of God's promise to his people. He is fulfilling Psalm 118 verse 22. He is the stone that the Jewish leaders had rejected, which became the cornerstone, the stone upon which the rest of the building depended. Peter then tells them, you won't be saved by anyone or anything else. I don't know about you, but I hope that the reading today just reminds you that Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, that he was there at the beginning and at the end, that no matter what happens in life, he is more than able. Despite how our leaders might behave and the decisions they might make, particularly those unscrupulous ones who might not care about the truth, but in only preserving their own authority. Despite what our situations are like, if it seems hopeless like the lame man's had for many, many years, despite how we've messed up and let Jesus down, like Peter did when he denied him, remember there is still hope, and Jesus is that hope, the one that we should build our lives upon, and fix our eyes upon. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and we pray that we take comfort from it today. Or for when situations are difficult or look bleak, that we have something to ground ourselves upon, to fix ourselves firmly on the hope that you bring. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, Mr. Hall, could I just ask you a question? You can. Now, you, you've been through a tricky time lately. How did you fix your hope on well, Jesus? Entirely on God. I mean, I, mean, I spent hours and hours just after surgery in a bed mm. uh, where people were literally dying around me. It was very disturbing uh, and all I did was talk to God and pray and pray for guidance, leadership and strength and to talk to some of the people, took the nurses around me about God and how I was coping because, because and I'm not blowing my own trumpet here, they, they commented on how strong I was being and that I was getting up out of bed and walking and yeah, and going down, I went down to the chapel every day, which was a long walk for someone who just had the bowel removed or a big chunk of it. Uh, and so, so I, I, my, my whole focus was on God. And, all, and, and in fact, throughout going back for chemotherapy, which was, was difficult, um, particularly when the coronavirus happened mm. and the great threat of me with no immune system catching it, uh, I, I was so frightened I would shake, and I never shake except when the United are losing. Uh, I've done a lot of shaking this week, and uh, and that, and I would go in and I would pray, and suddenly that that peace came. It literally fell over me, and I would, sometimes I would wonder how it had happened because seconds before I was literally just wanted to run home. Uh, and I, we could we could go on a long time about this, Barbara, because it's been nine months, and uh, we're, 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 my life has been entirely reliant 
And God and so has Joanne, she, mm-hmm. you know, my wife. Do you like that, by the way, Barbara? Why? I know it's so excited, isn't it? <laughs> it is. yeah. My wife Joanne, uh, who 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 has you know has also, as people from church know now, um, they've, they've been praying and and putting her life in God's hands. So yeah, God has carried me through this, yeah. and and hence that, that 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 reading was so very very powerful to me because I've been lifted and lifted and brought through. Yeah. What an incredible witness that is. So thank you for sharing that with us. I know I kept, I put you on the spot a bit there, but that's brilliant. So if we return back to our liturgy. Okay, open, open, open my eyes. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Lead me in the path of your commandments. That I may see the wonders of your law. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Now, I'm going to read the bold bit now so you can read the canticle, if that's okay. Oh, well, we've swapped roles, haven't we? <laughs> yes, there we go. I like that. In your yeah. tender compassion, O God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. And we say together, glory, glory to the Father, Father and to the and Son, to the Son and, and to, to the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is, is now and shall, and shall be, be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. In your tender compassion, O God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Let us pray. Lord, we just pray that you hear our prayers. And we just lay them before you now. The things that our hearts are calling out to you about. Today we give you thanks and praise Lord for answered prayers. We sometimes forget of how you've worked mightily in our lives. We forget to look back and stand on those times where you've sustained us. And Nick, we thank you, has reminded us today how you sustained him. And we give you thanks and praise. And we remember all the times you've been there to help us. Times we may not have known it, times we have. How your word has strengthened us and how we've been able to come to you freely in prayer. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, today we pray for all those that have cared for others through difficult times, who have been there on the end of a phone or have been an ear to listen to. We pray for patience, kindness and compassion 
We pray that we all have that one friend that we can turn to when life is difficult or it seems a struggle or we're not feeling our best. We know, Lord, that you are always there for us every single moment of the day and we can always turn to you in prayer and for that we give you thanks. We pray for the nursing profession today, for doctors, for scientists, for carers and for all those that work in and around our hospitals and um, care institutions and we just thank you Lord for their expertise, their dedication and their compassion. Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We just pray for all those that are struggling today Lord. However they might be struggling you know and we pray that the right opportunities, situations, people are put in place to help. Lord, we are your church. We are your body. We are your hands. And we just ask that you use us today, Lord. As only you can. In, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And our collect for today. Let your merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of your humble servant, and that they may obtain that they may obtain their petitions, make them to ask such things as shall please you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God indeed. And it's been lovely to have you with us, Mr. Hall. Have you enjoyed sure. it? <laughs> I've enjoyed it very much. <laughs> Yeah, there was a little black friend who's just arrived here trying to sit on my knee. Just pushed him off. My oh. little black cat's joined in the service halfway through. Oh, well, I was wondering what you were talking about then. <laughs> no, no, no. He's, my, he, he's like, he looks like a little panther, you know, and he's, he's little, and he came in to listen. It's been marvellous to, to speak to you all again. Uh, and then, Barbara, if you'd forgive me, I, I didn't talk to you about this, but I, if I could take this opportunity... Uh, without blubbing, and that's going to be a struggle for me. And I'd like to thank all of the people who've been praying, praying for my recovery. Mm. The, the Lord has been merciful. I, I was in the sea swimming on Saturday. Who would have thought that? You know, still a journey to go, and still lots of tests and things to go through. But your prayers, I've carried with me, mm. and I thank you all. Oh, God is good. God is certainly good, yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, um, Yvonne will be with me on Thursday. She's going to be um, giving the talk. So, um, we hope you can join us then. And whatever the next few days hold, we just pray that, that you fix your eyes on God. Have a great day. We will. Just in you.
Before the throne. 